Hey book lovers, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mar and for this video I just thought I would do a quick summer reading wrap up. So all of the books I read in the months of June, July, and August just for fun and just to sort of see what I decided to read this summer. Usually when it comes to summer I am more so of a slow reader. I don't read as many books as I do like in the fall and winter times. This summer I just found a lot more time and I just had a lot more free time to read. I would declare this summer to be my um, smutty summer. So a lot of the books that I've read are there's most of them are pretty adult. Some are middle grade young adult as well. So it was just a wide range of genres and reads that I read during the summer. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into this video. So the first sort of books I decided to read this summer was actually a book series and it was the Trials of Apollo book series by Rick Riordan. I saw these books sitting on my shelf and they're just books that I had for a while and I never got a chance to reading them and all that. I've like had these pretty much since each of them have come out. I just never really got into the Trials of Apollo series after I finished reading Heroes of Olympus. I just really wasn't interested in reading about Apollo or anything like that so I finally like how many years later after these have been released I decided to read them so the only one I haven't read is the last book in this series and that's mostly because I'm waiting to listen to the audiobook and the wait time on Libby for that is insanely long at my library this is me fighting with a bunch of probably fifth graders to listen to this audiobook so yeah currently waiting on that but overall these have I rated these around a 4 to 4.25 rating these just aren't my favorite books by Rick Riordan my all-time favorite series is definitely the Heroes of Olympus it's just like to me that's like the perfect series so every single book Rick Riordan releases I put on like I compare it to that level so nothing will ever beat the Heroes of Olympus series for me when it comes to Rick Riordan overall I had a good time reading these books again like Rick Riordan's books they're just fun to read they're fun to get into but Rick Riordan you are paying for my therapy bills after the burning maze okay this book literally broke me like it broke me ripped my heart out shredded it into pieces for a middle grade book it is the saddest book i've ever read <laughs> okay like and i'm not even exaggerating if you know you know if you know what happens in this book you know but literally like broke my heart shredded it into pieces I still haven't recovered from this book and I don't think I will ever recover from this book so thank you and also screw you Rick Riordan for doing that to me um yeah so those are my thoughts on the <laughs> trial of Apollo series overall I had a good time reading it I think there were definitely some books that were better than others but other than that I personally enjoyed reading the series and also since it's middle grade they're really easy reads and I think sometimes when you're definitely entering a, a reading slump you just need a fun easy comfort read that you know that you know you're going to enjoy. The next book I read was Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. And this book was actually gifted to me for my birthday by my friend Christine, who has been on this channel if you've been watching some of my other videos. But yeah, she gifted this for me for my birthday, which was back in April. Um, <laughs> so I finally got to reading it this summer. And she was also reading it way before I was, but I ended up finishing this book before her. I don't actually know if she ended up finishing this book or not, but I rated this a 3.5 stars. It's about this really dysfunctional family that has this family reunion in like the mountains in Australia, I believe, or something like that. I really don't know where they are, and a lot of mysteries are being uncovered about this family. Personally, for me, 
I like the writing of it. It's really, it's a really funny book and it's a really engaging book. It's just when it came to like the plot twists, I was like not engaged in them at all. Um, with a lot of the characters as well, I didn't really connect with any of them. I didn't fall in love with any of them or I didn't really like care about them enough. It made this book a bit harder to read just because I just simply did not care for the characters at all. And then by the time it got to the end, I don't know, I think the ending, the way it ended was kind of just like weak for me. The reveals at the end were kind of weak for me. It's like, don't get me wrong, there were some moments in here that I enjoyed reading about and all of that, but then there were other moments where I simply like just did not, like nothing was sticking in my brain and I genuinely kind of forget already what happens in this book. So yeah, um, those are my thoughts for everyone in my family has killed someone um 3.5 stars that's that so the next book i decided to read was dance of thieves by mary e pearson and normally i don't read any like fantasy romanticy types of books in the summer just because i am usually not feeling it but i decided to read dance of thieves just because it's been on my physical tbr for quite a while and so um Overall, I rated this a four stars. I know a lot of people rave about this book series and love it. It's very, they love the enemies to lovers trope and all of that. But for me, I don't know. I just couldn't get into it. And I feel like it's just based, it's mostly because I read it in the summer. And so it's like my mind just like wasn't there. It wasn't engaging with the material. It just like, I mean, obviously I read it. I understand why the people like why people like the characters and all that. But for me, it's like just the world building and all that. My brain was just like not computing at all. I don't know why. So I feel like if I reread this, um, especially like in the fall and all that, I would have a different reaction to it. Usually for fantasy and all that, I can usually grasp it pretty quickly. But for this one, I was like, I have no idea what's happening. Um, and I also feel like because I've read so many fantasy novels as well and like romanticy and all that, it's sort of like this one didn't hit as much. It's like overall still four stars. I still enjoyed reading this book. It's just, yeah, I think my opinions would be different if I actually read this like in the fall and all of that because I am a mood reader if you could not tell already. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Dance of Thieves. So the next book I decided to read was People We Meet on Vacation by Miss Emily Henry herself. I've read Happy Place and I've read Funny Story, and those are the first two Emily Henry books I've read just because they're her most recent releases. And so I finally picked up People We Meet on Vacation because this one is being turned into a movie and all that. All of her books are being turned into movies or adaptations and all that but this one we literally just got the casting for it this summer and they casted it like right after I read the book so I was like okay like perfect timing for me because once a movie or tv show is cast I start to picture the faces of the like the actors and the actresses and all of that when I read the book so it's harder for me to enjoy the books you know because for me I'm also someone this is like more of a me thing but when I picture book characters I literally build these characters from scratch I don't know if it's just because I'm a designer and that's like my creative brain or whatever but it's like I'm building these characters from scratch like the sims okay like I'm not fan casting people or anything like that it's like I am genuinely like building these characters in my mind and so it's like when it comes to casting literally no one can compare to the characters that are in my mind so that's why whenever casting happens a lot of the times I'm like I'm very indifferent because it's sort of like that's not how I'd picture the character yeah no duh because those those people don't exist okay like calm down girl but um yeah people we made on vacation i gave it a 4.5 stars overall i really liked it i can see why people say that like this is their least favorite emily henry book personally i enjoyed it i like the summer vibes to it and all that i do think that like this one isn't as much as the romance as people like say it. it's definitely like again emily henry books definitely lean toward like literary fiction so it's like even though there's romance that happens in her books a lot of the times the books are about characters discovering things about themselves that's about these two people who 
you know, were best friends. They had a falling out. And then, you know, they're trying to sort of repair their relationships. Personally, for me, I think Happy Place or Funny Story are still, like, when it comes to ratings, I still would rank them higher than people we meet on vacation. But just for, like, a summer read and all that, I had a good time reading people we meet on vacation. The next book I picked up was Not in Love by Allie Hazelwood. I did film a What I Read in a Week video, so that has this and then also the next couple books I've read. So if you want to hear my full reviews and all of that on those books, go watch those videos. But for Not In Love, I gave this a 4.5. I am one of those people that really enjoyed this book. This one is literally like, it's for smutty summer, okay? Like it's for the girls who just want to read some smut that may or may not be me. But yeah, it's just these two people that are just like really horny for each other. Obviously, there's more to this book than than what I'm saying about it. But yeah, overall, it's like I just needed a quick read to entertain me. If you want to read a book that, of Allie Hazelwood's that has, you know, more depth in the characters and the story and all that, I would say her previous books are much better, like Love, Theoretically, Check and Mate, even Bride, like that one has more of a story. This one, it's like the story kind of takes a back seat and it's mostly just like two people really wanted to do stuff with each other. That's Not in Love by Ali Hazelwood. The next book I read was The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. And this is the first Christina Lauren book I picked up. And this was my five-star read of the summer. I absolutely loved The Paradise Problem. I ate up every single bit of it. This being my first Christina Lauren novel, I was like, wow, they outdone themselves. So now like every other Christina Lauren novel I read is going to be like ranked against this book. But overall, it was just the perfect summer read. And I feel like if I read it any other time, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. But I love the characters. I love the story. I loved just like the banter and all that stuff. Like I loved every single bit of it. And I feel like the paradise problem was what I more so expected like when it comes to vibes when I was reading people we meet on vacation I thought it would be I thought people we meet on vacation would be like a bit more like summertime vibey and all that and that really wasn't the case where it's like this one this is summertime vibey it takes place on an island in like Indonesia or whatever and it's there's like marriage of convenience fake dating like all of these tropes that I personally enjoy and eat up so it's like this was my five-star read I loved it. I already want to reread this book and like annotate it and everything. Like that's how much I enjoyed reading this book. So yeah, those are my thoughts on The Paradise Problem by Christina Lauren. The next book I decided to read was None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. And this is mostly due to the fact that I was on a Criminal Minds kick this summer. I decided to binge all 17 seasons of Criminal Minds because I am jobless and I have a lot of free time. I was watching so much Criminal Minds and then I was like, I need to find a book series that is like Criminal Minds. And if you've watched my videos, you already know that almost like in every single video, I mentioned The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. It is my favorite book series of all time. So I wanted to find another sort of book series to kind of just like, you know, that's about... FBI agents, profilers, serial killers, and all that. And so I picked up None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. And this, I gave a 4.25 stars. This sort of satiated my criminal minds, like, kick and need for a book to read. And overall, I really liked it. I really enjoyed the story and all that. Go watch my video where I do a deep review of this. Overall, I had a really fun time reading this one. I ate it up really quickly. So yeah. After that, I decided to read The Rom-Commers by Catherine Center. And this is the first Catherine Center novel I picked up. And I've heard a lot of good things about Catherine Center. A lot of people like her books and all of that. I gave this one a 4.5 stars, which like now that I'm thinking about it, it's sort of like, I feel like I rated this a bit too high 
but whatever. Like, I think I would rate it actually like a four stars, 4.25 stars. And, um, pretty much I had a good time reading, but for me, I just didn't like the characters in this one. It's not that I couldn't connect with them. It's just, I just don't see why they were together. Like, I just don't see why the female main character and the male main character, I just didn't see the connection. I don't see why they ended up together. I just didn't like the guy in this one, to be quite honest. The girl was fine. Like, girl, you were fine. It's just the guy, to me, was sort of a red flag. So, I don't know. Like, that's just my personal opinion. You can think otherwise, but I was... I don't know. I just don't understand why the characters got together. I like the ending of it, but I'm also like, but do I think they would be happy together in the future or anything? Like, would they end up a still married couple or would they end in divorce? And I think they would end in divorce. So yeah, that's that. like, that's just my thoughts on it. The next book I read after that, or I sh- should say listen to, I listened to the audiobook for King of Wrath by Anna Huang. And to be fair, King of Wrath was sort of like a soft DNF for me. Like I used my Audible credit for that way back in May, I think. And then I just sort of stopped listening because I was getting bored while like listening to the audiobook. And so I gave it a three stars. And the only reason why I decided to finish was because my like one of my favorite audiobook narrators was doing the narration for the audiobook and also it's in duet style so it's like the guy does the male character voices and then the girl does the girl female character voices I like the duet style of narrating as well when it comes to audiobooks but just like story-wise and all of that like it was just very Anna Huang like I don't know. Like, personally, for me, I never give Anna Huang a four stars or anything when it comes to her books. Like, her books are always in the three star, 3.5 star range for me. And so, like, I just sort of read her books if I just want, like, a quick read where, like, not much is happening and there's, like, you know, some smut and all that. Like, I don't know. Anna Huang is not my favorite author, but it's like I read her books simply just to read them sometimes. So yeah, King of Wrath could not tell you what actually happens in that book. I could, I can barely tell you the characters' names. There's, I think it's Vivian and Dante. Yeah, like that's how much I got out of that book. So I gave it three stars. Like I didn't hate it or anything like that. It's just like, I just don't really remember what happens um in that book and that is that the next book i read was the grandest game by jennifer lynn barnes this came out over the summer and so again i i eat up pretty much everything that jennifer lynn barnes writes like she's my auto buy author so obviously had to get this had to read it inheritance games isn't like my favorite book series and then now she's moved on to the grandest game series which is like the spin-off series of inheritance games and all of that but it's like, you know what, girl? It's like, I eat up everything you read. So, like, you could you, you could write a book about anything, and I'm pretty sure I would read it. I give it a 4.5 stars. I mean, like, I like the puzzles. I like the characters. I would say this one, compared to the other books I've read by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, it's just, it doesn't have that same spark as, like, the other books. So I don't know. It's like maybe because it's like a spinoff series and like, you know, we're being introduced to a bunch of like newer characters and all that. It's harder to connect with them and all of that. Again, like I still gave it a 4.5 stars. Like, don't get me wrong. I like this book and all that. It's just, yeah, it's like when it comes to the grandest game, I understand why people like say like they don't like the inheritance game series as much and all that like I understand that criticism but if she like wants to do a spinoff of the naturals like literally anytime girl I am sat I am here I'm ready to eat it up but yeah it's like the grandest game it's going to continue probably for the next couple years so I'm like ready for it to be quite honest again like I will eat up anything Jennifer Lynn Barnes writes so yeah, those are my thoughts on The Grandest Game. So the next books 
Arya series I read or listened to was the Getting Some series on Audible, and it's by the author Emma Chase. And pretty much there's three books in the series. So there's Getting Schooled, Getting Played, and Getting Real. And overall, I rated all of those books four stars. Personally, I just read, I just listened to it on Audible because, again, I like the narrator. I like the male narrator of it. And I just needed something like easy to listen to while I was like working and all of that stuff. So, yeah, it's like the Getting Some series is pretty much about these three or, okay, two of them are brothers. And then one of them is sort of like this family friend that grew up with the guys and all of that. And it's pretty much about each of them like trying to find love, falling in love with these different girls and all that. Um, in like their little small town and I don't know where they're living. Overall, it's really cute. It's a really cute series and like there aren't any stupid conflicts or anything, which I find nice. Like they like all the conflicts handled like adults handle situations. So that's what I liked about it. Highly recommend it if you are looking for a book series to listen to on Audible. It's free with your Audible subscription if you listen to it, so highly recommend. Another thing I listened to on Audible um, this summer was a story called The Wedding Proposal by John Swansinger, and that one I gave like a 3.75. It's like a real, it's like a short story pretty much, and like it's pretty much about this like woman whose engagement gets called off by her like fiance and all that and she's already like booked the wedding and everything like that and she can't get a refund on it so she ends up seeing this couple getting engaged and she offers pretty much her wedding spot to them and she pretty much becomes like a wedding planner and all of that and so it's a really fun and easy like listen I don't know why I was listening to this one considering I am 23 and not in any way ready to get married or anything like that I don't know I just wanted a quick fun little read and found that one. So yeah, 3.75 stars for the wedding proposal. The next book I decided to read was Not If I Save You First by Ali Carter. This I rated four stars. And again, one thing about me is Ali Carter is one of my favorite authors. She is the one that raised me as a kid and her books are sort of what got me into reading. She released a standalone novel, which I never even knew she did until like recently. I decided to read it. I did a full review on my channel so you can go watch my video on it. But overall I had a fun time reading it. It just made me so nostalgic of like reading her previous series growing up as a kid. Not If I Save You First by Ali Carter. Four stars. The next book I decided to pick up was Little White Lies by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I was on my Jennifer Lynn Barnes kick and this is like the last series I have to read of hers. It's the debutante series. So this one I gave four stars. What I like about Jennifer Lynn Barnes, again, is her books are so easy to get into. They're so easy to read. And so like right from the first chapter, I was like eating this up. The next book I listened to was The 620 Man by David Baldaki. I think that's how you say his name. I don't know. But I gave that like a 3.5 stars. I wanted to just like, again, listen to a book while I was working and all that. And I saw that like, again, my favorite audiobook narrator, Zachary Weber, he does the narration for this one. And so I was like, I might as well listen to it um the story was okay I mean I think with like again this book was written by like an older man and I am definitely not in the demographic to read his books it's a mystery novel and all that there's a mystery trying to be solved and all that but um the main character is like this guy who was like in the army and all that and I'm just like I feel like that's just not my forte when it comes to book characters um I was really just I was here for the plot the plot being Zachary Weber and so um yeah those are that's my thoughts on the 620 man I don't have many thoughts because I genuinely don't remember what happens in this book but I do remember the 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 ending the ending was okay I would say I would say the ending is okay I just think it was like the the build-up to the ending was kind of boring those are my thoughts on the 620 man the next book I read was Tangled Up in You by Christina Lauren. 
Again, this is Christina Lauren's, their latest release. And it's Tangled themed and all of that. It was the Tangled retelling. It's a modern retelling of Tangled. So I was like, the two things I love. And that is Christina Lauren and Tangled. So I was like, I had to read this one. Overall, I had a fun time reading it. I gave it a 4.25 stars. If you like Tangled, if you want to read a modern retelling of it, read this book. Like, that's all I'm going to say. It's like, it's fairly straightforward to get. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on Tangled Up in You. The last two books I read this summer were Flawless by Elsie Silver and Done and Dusted by Lila Sage. And that was for my reading cowboy romances for a week video so go check that video out but flawless i gave a 3.75 stars and done and dusted i gave it four stars if you want to hear my full thoughts go watch that video because i i give you my opinions and i give you my thoughts on cowboy romances and all of that that is the quick summer reading wrap up overall i read more books than i thought I would be reading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you read the same books I did or if you read any good summer books. Um, let me know your five star reads. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!